I'm gonna teach you how to create this infinite looping carousel in Webflow with absolutely no code. So let's hop into Webflow. I have my hero section designed out and my carousel is gonna go just down here. So I'm gonna add a div block and I'm gonna call it my carousel container. Inside of my carousel container, I'm going to add another div block and I'm gonna call it my logo container. And my logo container, I'm going to add some padding. We'll say 30 on the top. 30 on the bottom, and then a black background. Now inside my logo container, I'm going to add five images. I'll just start with one image and give it a class and then duplicate that after I've set up the class. So I'll call it my uh, logo image and give it a height of 50 pixels. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna duplicate it four more times. So there's a total of five logos. You can add as many as you want or whatever. If you're doing text content, you can uh, style that however you want. I'm gonna switch these over so they're unique logos. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my logo container and space out these logo images. So flex, and then this far right one is space around. So it's an equal spacing in between. This is necessary. If you don't do this, there's going to be some jerkiness in your carousel that you do not want. So now that we have this set up, I need to add a second logo container on the right side, kind of off screen. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to copy my logo container hit my carousel container and then paste. So now we have two logo containers in the carousel container. Now to get them side by side, all I have to do is hit flex, display flex on the carousel container. So that worked, however, the sizing is not right here. It kind of crunched them together. So the way that we fix that is we have to give them a set width. Now, if I had 100% width, it's not gonna work. I need to say a, a minimum width of 100%, and that's gonna make sure that it spans the entire width of its parent, which is the carousel container. Now, it does go off screen, so what you need to do is you need to click your carousel con container and then hit overflow hidden, and now I can't scroll over to the right. Um, this second logo container is hidden until it comes into view. Now, to make sure it's working correctly, you can click your logo container, hit position relative, and then move it over to the left, and you should see this second logo container come into screen. Now, if it's not working, then it probably means you missed a step or something isn't set up correctly, and you'll have to fix that before moving on. If it is working, let's move on to the next step, which is actually setting up the animation. So, you can do this a couple of different ways. You can do element trigger, and then scroll into view, which is oftentimes what I do. In this case, I'm just gonna do a page trigger. Either way would work. So I'm gonna do page load, action, start an animation, and then I'm gonna add a new one, and we'll call this one my infinite loop, and I'm gonna spell it correctly here. Okay, now what I can do is I can click my logo container, and I'm gonna hit move. It's a really simple animation. There's not gonna be a lot of interactions here. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna type in negative 100%. And what that does is it moves it over 100% of its parent container width, which is exactly what I wanted. Now, the reason why it kind of disappeared is because this, lo this second logo container isn't being targeted. So all I have to do is change it to affect the class, and now it's affecting both of these and not just one of them. So what we're seeing here is actually this second one, which was over here on the right side, it moved over 100%, so it's in place of this first one. And then we can give it a duration. You can pick how fast you want it to go. You can play it here and see how quick it's going. Now, the one thing we need to do, if we save it, and then hit loop. It will loop, but the issue is the loop is gonna get stuck here at the end because it, it doesn't know to go back to the beginning. So we have to actually give it a beginning. So we'll duplicate it, go to this first one, and bring it back to its beginning position, which was 0%. Now, if we save it and then preview it, it will loop um, and it will go back to the beginning. Sometimes what I do, um, if there's a little bit of a herky jerkiness at the end, what I'll do is I'll change this to something like negative 99.9 or something like that. Um, it, it depends on what exactly you're doing and how you're styling it, but just something to keep in mind. You may have to to do something like that to, to get it to, to fix the jerkiness. Um, and then that's really it. So if we go here and we watch it, 
we'll give it 10 seconds and um, the loop should stop right about here or it should reset right about here because this is the first one and it does it's working perfectly and then the final styling that i did for this carousel again you can style it however you want was i gave it a max width now the reason why we set it up to go negative 100 percent so we'll go back here the reason why we set it to negative 100 percent and not 100 viewport width is because of what I'm about to do, which is I'm gonna change the container width of my carousel container. And when I change the container width, I want these logo containers to animate based on this width and not the viewport width. So hopefully you're following me, but this is, this is a client website that I did and this is exactly what I'm talking about. This carousel needed to, to fit this box width and not the entire viewport width, and that's very common. So I like to set it up with 100% animation, but um, you know, you obviously can, can uh, fix it to whatever it is you're doing. So we'll say 1200 pixel, and then we'll move it to the center. Maybe we'll do 1400 pixel and then give it a radius of 100 and then we hit play here and it'll loop exactly how we want it to um, because the animation's already set up and this will also work on mobile you can change the width say for example you go on mobile device and you can sh change the logo container to like 300 percent and then you will need to change the height to like 25 percent of the logos it will still work and it will still loop correctly um, even if you change the percent of the logo container. So just keep that in mind. It's designed to work for mobile responsiveness as well. Hope you enjoyed this video and we will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.